I'm about to enter the bite zone with the venomous bloodworm on three. One, two, three. Ah! What's going on guys? I am back in the state of Maine to officially test the bite of the venomous bloodworm. In order to do this justice, we are going to try to find a monster worm. And to do that, I've enlisted the help of legendary bloodworm hunter, Wayne Fishko. Wayne, is this where we find the monster worms? This is it. All right, man, let's get digging. Let's go. Bloodworms live and hunt deep in the mudflats of Maine, where they can only be dug up during extreme low tides. We've enlisted Wayne's help because he's a professional bloodworm digger with over 30 years of experience. You see, out here, bloodworms are prized fishing bait and vital to the livelihood of many coastal Mainers. So if anyone knows where to find the truly giant bloodworms out here, it's Wayne. This one's not too bad. No, it's not bad at all. Is it gonna get deeper? It is. It's hard out here, guys. This is like, this is work. Oh, Asa, Asa, you all right? Yeah, these things are really sticking. Walk on the balls of your feet, bud. You wanna be able to twist your heel. When you take it out, it breaks the suction, and basically, you know, you just twist. Yeah, just twist. A little twist. wiggle. Walk and wiggle, guys, like a worm. As you can see, it's very slow moving in the mud, so we're gonna have to find our bloodworms fast once we get out there. High tide is moving in quickly, and this whole area we're digging in will be 10 feet underwater in less than an hour. All right, let's get at it. All right, so this is it? This oh, it's going it. right in. I'm going, I'm, I'm getting at it. Okay. Cause like, see like, right here, right here. Check you this already out. got one? Check this out, look, look, look. Oh, wow, that's a big one. Check that out, man. Look at that, look at the head on that. All right, let's put it in the bucket. Yes, sir. All right, awesome. Now I gotta find one. We're trying to dig as many monster-sized bloodworms as we can while the tide is still low. And then we'll pick the largest one, the true monster bloodworm for the bite test. Oh, bloodworm, got my first one. That's a beauty. Look at that, got one. Ha <laughs> ha, first bloodworm beauty. of the day. Keep working. All right, here's a sandworm. Here's a really good sandworm too. Amongst other things, these sandworms are food. It's what the bloodworms are eating out here in the mud flats. So you see the difference? The sandworm has much longer parapodia. These are, those are the little bristles, the swimming appendages on the side of the worm than the bloodworm. And you can see that the difference in color is pretty substantial. Now sandworms have a nasty bite as well, two fangs, but they're not venomous. Lots of different creatures and creepy crawlies out here on the mud flats. Since we've been digging, Wayne's found like three bloodworms. I found one. I need to get to work. Oh, I got one. <laughs> I got That's a huge beauty. one. Wow. Oh my gosh, this is the biggest bloodworm I have ever caught. Look yeah. at the size of that bloodworm, guys. Huge. Yes. So, Wayne, you think the bigger the worm, the bigger the bite? I think the bigger the worm, the bigger the bite. All no right. question. All right, let's dig up a big one, guys. That's what we came for. Oh, yeah. Look at that right there. Whoa. That's a monster. That is a huge bloodworm, Wayne. That's a contender. Let's put that in the bucket. Yes. Oh, oh, there we go, right there. Now, these are venomous creatures. They do bite and they bite without warning. Now, one of the ways people are often bit is when they're picking them up from the mud because they will actually shoot their mouth part out, their proboscis, in order to dig. Watch this. Whoa, you see that? So not only does it use that projectile mouth, that proboscis to grapple its prey and consume the other worms that live in this environment, it actually uses that proboscis to bore tunnels so it can bury itself down in the mud. See the hole it makes? Pretty darn cool. Oh, oh what is this? Look at that. Holy smokes. Well, this is a milky ribbon worm. This is a huge milky ribbon worm. Okay, so here, let's, let's take a look at this real quick. Guys, this is a milky, ribbon worm and look how look how long this worm is that's that's definitely over a foot these worms can grow over to over four feet in length believe it or not I got one right here. oh my gosh check that out Wayne can you bring that over here I sure can wow okay yours is a lot bigger than mine Wayne huh. I'm gonna put my milky ribbon worm down let's clean this off I want to show you guys oh look at that that's it it's proboscis came out look at that that is so cool. Watch it, watch it, watch oh. it. Watch it on your hand. It's gonna crawl all over. Oh, wow. It is a different world out here on the mud flat. All right, let's put this milky room worm back and keep looking for bloodworms. This is definitely big worm country. Tide's coming in. You see all that water, guys? We gotta keep digging. Oh, that was a big one. That's a huge one. Come on, come out. Ugh. 
Yes! That is a monster. It sure is. Wayne, this is the easily the biggest blood worm I have ever seen. And we have found our contender. And now it's time to set up the bite table and officially rank the bite of the venomous blood worm. Let's do it. Here we are, back at the bite table. Let's take a closer look at these venomous predators. Wayne, you got our worms? I sure do, right here. Oh man, that's a full bucket. Look at all these worms. Oh my goodness. Let's take a few out and get a closer look. Wow, look at that. These are all jumbos. Now these are the only marine worms on the planet that can deliver a venomous bite, but it is not the only venomous worm on the planet. In fact, I've already ranked another species of venomous worm, the bearded fireworm, on the bite sting index. Ah, yeah, the birds. Ah, ah. And it rated as a nine. In fact, even to this day, I still have scars left over from the fireworm, so I'm curious can the blood worm's venomous bite stack up to that venomous sting from the fireworm? Well, today we're officially going to find out. Now let's talk about how it delivers the venom. It is a complex venom, much like snake venom, that they use to incapacitate or paralyze their prey. Once they latch in with those jaws, they inject the venom, stun their prey, so then they can easily eat it whole. And the proboscis, the mouth part, is actually on the inside of the worm. And when it shoots it out of its mouth, it's almost flipping its stomach inside out. And at the end of the proboscis, there are four hooked fangs. In addition to delivering venom, those four teeth are like grappling hooks. And that's exactly what I wanna show you right now. If we can get one to fire off its proboscis, I will attempt to head it, and I will show you a very up close shot of those four hooked fangs. Now, Wayne, I'm gonna give you all the credit for this because until I saw Wayne do this in one of his videos, I had no idea heading a blood worm was even possible. How did you figure this out? Just over time. I mean, yeah. I, you see them come out and it's kind of like you, you've only got that split second. They're so quick, you've got to get behind that base of the head and uh, to be able to really get a, a good shot of them, you've, you've really got to be quick because they are. These blood worms are capable of firing off a bite, but in order to do today's bite test, I'm gonna intentionally put those painful grappling hooks into my arm. So let's just watch here. As soon as I see a proboscis fire out, I'm gonna grab it. Oh, got it. Got one. That's a big one too, look at this. Now if I just hold it, it's going to readjust and show us those fangs. I gotta be careful to not get bitten right now. This is an easy way to take a bite. I do not recommend anybody do this at home. If you ever find blood worms, this is not the safest way to handle one. All right, there you go. See those jaws? Look at that. That is the inside of the blood worm's mouth. And you can see there are four grappling hook reverse fangs at each corner of the mouth. And not only are those fangs used to pierce the skin and inject venom, but they're grappling hooks. They actually use it to clinch onto their prey and suck it into their mouth and inside the gullet of their body. When it comes to bizarre creatures, it's hard to think of one more bizarre than the blood worm. Now, I think it's time to pick out the blood worm that's going to deliver the infamous bite for this video. And to do that, we are going to go for the biggest one possible. All right, I'm gonna grab all the giant blood worms out of the bucket, and then Wayne will help me pick the biggest of the bunch for the bite. Oh man. Didn't come all the way to Maine to do a bite test with a little blood worm. No, no, it's not gonna cut it. No. Small, eh, small, that one's good. All right, I think we've got some contenders here. Wayne, I'm gonna need your help on this one. Okay. Let's start eliminating, like, do you see any in here that look undersized to you? This yeah, one looks a little, small. a little small. All right, we'll put this one back. Yeah, okay, well, look at the girth on that one and this one. Look at yeah. that thing there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that thing there is huge. That's a contender. It sure is. All no, right, I'll put that one back. I'm gonna say this, this, or this. Let's move these other ones out. Okay, so these down to these three. Yep, down to those three. Okay. Boy, I'll tell you, that one there looks like a nice worm. Okay. That really oh. does. All right. Wayne, this is the one. That's the one. This is the beast. Uh, these are not small worms either. They're all, they're all big, but we're gonna go with the professional on this one. Wayne, I think you picked out a winner, man. Look at the size of this worm. Oh my goodness. I mean, guys, this is this worm is well over a foot and a half in length when it's all extended out. But look at how thick it is. And you can really see why they call them blood worms with this. Look at that. You can see the all that 
dark, oozy blood inside the belly of the worm. And you can see it actually if I go like this. It slides up and down, giving them the name blood worm. But look at that. Look at how huge it is. Oh boy, this is gonna hurt. All right, now we just need to sit here and wait for this blood worm to shoot its proboscis out. I will head it and then intentionally let it grapple onto my forearm. And once it hooks in, it's not gonna wanna let go. I think getting it to bite is one thing, getting it off is another challenge. And of course, like always, we're gonna rate this bite test for the BSI, the Bite Sting Index, on three different factors, intimidation, pain, and aftermath. And I can tell you right now, the aftermath of this bite is gonna be a doozy. All right, now the bite from these blood worms are, oh, got it. Oh yeah, woo, talk about a waiting game. All right, here we go guys, this is it. Oh, this is gonna be gnarly. I'm Mark Benz and I'm about to enter the bite zone with the venomous blood worm on three. One, two, three. Bite marks. Ah, oh, ah, yeah. Must be like 12 bite marks. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, it's latched. It's latched on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my gosh, I can feel the venom. Uh, oh, oh, I can't get it off. I can't get it off. Oh. Uh, ah. All right, I'm gonna put the worm back. Oh, oh. Oh my gosh. It feels like four bee stings at once. Each fang I could feel popping through the skin. Oh yeah. And that is gonna swell up guys. Wait till you see this. See all the redness there? It's starting to come through. And that's all my blood. That is not from the blood worm, that's from me. That's from the fangs going into my skin. It definitely has some kind of anticoagulant in the blood that just with the slightest graze of those fangs, it makes you bleed like instantly. Oh my gosh. Oh. Are you okay? Oh, it's gonna be burning for a while. That is a serious bite from a serious marine predator, the blood worms of Maine. And now it's time to officially rate this venomous marine worm on the Brave Wilderness by Sting Index. Run it. Whew. On intimidation, these blood worms have an ultra high creep factor. They're like an alien from another planet. And watching those hooked fangs move around, knowing they're designed to latch into flesh, sets my nerves on fire. And for that, I rank them an 8.5 out of 10. Now pain is where the blood worm truly earns its score on the BSI. Those hooked jaws bit me over and over again, allowing more and more super painful venom to enter my body. Each fang was painful on its own, so getting bitten by all four at once, wow, yeah, that hurt. And then the pain for the venom was red hot and caused immediate redness and swelling all around the bite zone. So for all this, I give the pain a nine out of 10. Now for aftermath, the bite of the bloodworm swelled and itched terribly for over 72 hours after I was bitten. Five days later, it had essentially healed with no sign that it ever happened in the first place. By comparison, the aftermath of the fireworm sting lasted for months and racked up one of the worst aftermath scores on the BSI to date. The bloodworm, however, still gets a respectable eight out of 10 for aftermath. Altogether, the bloodworm ranks at an 8.5 out of 10 on the Brave Wilderness Bicing Index, climbing high on the all-time rankings, but falling just short of the ferocious fireworm. If you enjoyed that episode, make sure to search for the Brave Wilderness channel on YouTube so you can join me and the crew on our upcoming adventures. <laughs>